Hello and welcome to what I guess is season two of the Irish Tennis Updates podcast. I'm really excited to be back with some brand new episodes and today we're starting with a brilliant guest. Yvonne Doyle won 10 professional titles including the Irish Open, has career high singles and doubles rankings inside the top 250, played Fed Cup for Ireland for many years and also served as captain of the Fed Cup team for six years in the, in the 2010s. These days, Yvonne is a yoga and meditation teacher and is putting the finishing touches to a program specific to tennis players. We discuss where you can find out more about this, as well as the highs and lows of Yvonne's college and pro careers, her advice to juniors, and much more. Yvonne speaks so well and has so much to offer. I really think you'll find this a great episode, so let's get into it. Right, so Yvonne, if you could choose any superpower, what superpower would you choose and, and why? Okay, so, um, well, as a tennis player who mm-hmm. has played lots and lots of um, matches in the past and who hasn't uh, won every match that they would have wanted to win, I think I'd love my superpower to be that I could turn back time and go back to those matches and just, you know, you know, there's a few that stand out in my mind that I know if I'd won or would have you know hit the ball the other way on match point I would have won or you know if I had relaxed more on match point I could have won Uh, so yeah that would be my superpower just to be able to turn back time and uh, yeah just turn those matches around yeah you can imagine it coming in handy all right to have a a, a do-over for for a few things yeah because I'm sure every tennis player out there has those uh just those matches where they regret maybe a decision that they made or a shot that they hit or, you know, um, a shot that they didn't hit. Mm. uh, And, you know, it could have made all the difference for them. You you know, and these matches, they can eat you up for a while. You know, they can really, um, oh, you can be just so upset and disappointed after them. And, you know, I know now just thinking that because I haven't played a competitive match in, oh, I don't know how long. when was the last time? Maybe 2008, so 12, okay, yeah. 12 years ago. Um, but just uh, there are still a few that I think in my mind, I'm like, oh, God, I should have won them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, turning yeah. back time, being able to do that, that would be sweet. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What advice do you think you'd, you'd give to someone who, you know, is in the kind of situation they've, they've taken maybe a tough loss? Do you have any kind of advice to help them get over it, maybe get ready, get ready for the, the next match or the next tournament or whatever it may be? Yeah, um, I think, um, actually, I just re- recorded a meditation on this the other day. Okay. Um, just uh, So this will be going into my little program. Um, but uh, it's a, and I, and I was just trying to put myself back in that situation where, you know, I used to get so upset after losses, especially like, say, if it's a three set or, you know, yeah. you lost seven, six in the third or something. Um, and I, I, I think, first of all, it's good to kind of uh, grieve the loss <laughs> in a mm, way. Like, yeah. don't try and, um, you know, the minute you come off court, don't try and you know go to your coach and fix it and or or talk about why you went wrong I think it's a good idea to you know just let let time kind of settle for a a little bit and then when you're not so emotional then try to look at you know do a post-match analysis um yeah where, where did I do what what did I do well where what did I do not do so well and where can I make improvements you know yeah. and maybe where was the turning point in the match what what a uh, shot was going well what shots weren't going well and um, that kind of thing uh, just to do that but a little bit you know not not straight after your loss because yeah. uh, you know you'll have a lot of emotion still in there you could be angry you could be devastated <laughs> you could be yeah. sad you know and um, you could be frustrated so it's good to just yeah take a bit of time and then um to go back over your goals you know what are your goals and just to keep reminding yourself that this is just a blip in the process and you know I was always a great believer that you're going to learn so much more from your losses than you do from your wins and you Mm. know while it can hurt so bad at times you know if it's a real tight match and you come away um 
not the winner, yeah. <laughs> the runner up. Um, uh, is still though there is always something to be learned from that loss and then to to just be able in the future like you know with in the future you will kind of thank this loss I always yeah. try to say that to myself when I was losing or, or when I had a bad loss you know I'd be like I'm gonna learn from this I'm determined to learn from this and um, I won't make these same mistakes again and uh, I look back and I'll have a, a win later on that I'll say, oh, I don't mind that loss anymore yeah. because I have this win now, you know. Yeah, so. yeah absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's, that's a great way to look at it, that it's, you know, it is kind of just a learning curve, like building blocks for, for the future. I think that that's a really good, good way to look at it. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah, definitely, you know, mm. just trying to be positive about the experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so just to, to bring it, um things back to kind of the current time how are you how's how's lockdown been kind of for you and dealing with the the new way of life i guess we're all adjusting to yeah it's uh, it's been good um lockdown was a time where i was able to spend loads of time with my family my boys my dad two mm. young boys and my husband and we were we have a garden that we love and we we so we spent a lot of time in the garden uh just got the veggies uh, going yeah. well this year um, yeah and then I got an opportunity to do um, some stuff online that I wouldn't have uh, done I suppose if we hadn't had lockdown and um, you know Stephen and John from Leinster Tennis asked me to do um, maybe a yoga video for tennis players so mm. I was like, oh yeah, perfect. I'll do a few like, you know, yoga poses or whatever. So I put together a little video. So I did that and there was a good, there was a good response and I did another one and I got to spend time uh, creating stuff like that and started to get more creative with the, with all the free time. I started to get more creative in my mind and, um, you know, thinking about my yoga business my yo i teach yoga and meditation so um starting to try and put little courses together so um yeah so it was a good a good time for me that way and um, any kind of lessons you've learned during the lockdown that you know have helped you where you can you know you've learned things you can bring forwards as we kind of return to slightly more normal life anything you can take from this time um i suppose uh, there's a few things yeah just um we don't need as much stuff as we think we need yeah. uh, you know um because there was a while there where you know we weren't shopping or anything now I wouldn't be a brilliant sh like a, a big shopper or anything but just being able to survive at home now you know we'd had our just our grocery shopping every week but just uh yeah so that would be one thing just you know stuff we all have so much stuff um mm that really do we really need this no no we don't <laughs> you know in the grand scheme of things no as long as you have a roof over your head you've got enough food you know that's that they're what Absolutely, the important yeah. that's you yeah. know they're the important things um and then just time uh, valuing time just time to breathe time to uh you know having space in the head <laughs> like just yeah. having uh, it was lovely just to not have to be rushing everywhere. Uh, you know, our schedules, you know, everybody talks about it nowadays, you know, this modern world we live in, our schedules are jam packed. And if they're not jam packed, we kind of make them jam packed with, you know, social media and yeah. uh, scrolling on the phone, all that sort of rubbish. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was nice to kind of just have a bit of breathing space. Um, yeah having my diary and not having anything scheduled in was was really good yeah you know so yeah just i'd like to keep that going yeah, now you know it, yeah. i could feel um just as time starts to uh or as as we're getting back into things you know things are opening up and uh you know a lot more things are being put on you know the kids my kids uh, activities more activities are going ahead now yeah. uh yeah i just don't want to fall back into that trap of just go 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 and not taking a breath or not taking a pause you know just to kind yeah. of live and just be aware of what's happening in absolutely. the present moment yeah. you know yeah 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 absolutely um 
Yeah, no, to, just to bring you back a bit to maybe early on in, in your kind of tennis journey briefly, um, how, do you, how did that all start? How did you kind of get into tennis and, and what do you think made you kind of stick with tennis over any other sports you might have been doing and, and keep tennis up? Yeah, well, so I um, grew up in Castlenock and um, now my parents didn't really play tennis. Uh, uh, my mom might have played a little bit, but it, our, just the reason myself and a few of my sisters and brothers played was uh, because we were a five minute walk from the tennis club. So mm. it was just, it was quite easy um, yeah. just to pop down to the club, you know, and my older sisters would take me down and um, so I started playing there and uh, then I just, I, I started playing when I was seven. And I think when I was nine or I probably played my first open tournament when I was nine. And then I started to really get into it. I suppose yeah. I loved the competition um, and really, uh, yeah, the competition kind of drove me to, to work harder, you know, and that was at quite an early age, you know, when I was about 10, I, you know, took, started taking it quite seriously. Um, and uh, then I, I suppose I would have got onto a Leinster squad. I started doing well in the tournaments. I, I won Fitzwilliam under 12, won, you know, in that, uh, yeah, in the, my last year under 12. Um, so I was just, uh, and actually when you say other sports, I didn't really play any other mm. sports. I kind of exactly. just went full on into tennis mode and just didn't want to do anything else. Uh, for me now, it was, just uh i i actually loved the training part you know just going and training and working as hard as i could and really feeling like oh i've given it my all in training um and then i loved having little goals uh for myself you know i started with setting goals you know when i was a teenager like oh i want to win fitzwilliam i want to get to a certain ranking in ireland yeah. that kind of stuff um and i just felt that yeah that helped me um just be very focused uh, and disciplined i was just yeah that kind of player where i just tried to find out as much as i could about uh, things that would help my tennis and you know like so i did start looking at the mental game quite early mm. on because i used to get very upset on the court um you know, where I'd get really frustrated and uh, maybe nervous and angry and all those kind of emotions on the court. So, um, and I didn't want to give up because I loved playing and I really wanted to win, but I needed to figure out a way how to not let my my head beat me up yeah. or beat me, not beat me up, but beat me up, beat me yeah. on court, yeah, you know, yeah. you know, the way they say, oh, did you, did you beat yourself or did the other person beat you, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, yeah. um yeah, so that that was it. Just um, just kind of this will to to. I, I didn't like losing. I loved winning, um, and I was a bit of a perfectionist. And just kind of uh, that took me to up to when I was under eighteen. Um, did, did you have like an idol, kind of someone you, you looked up to when you were kind of growing up? You know, maybe in tennis or 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 not. Anyone you kind of looked yeah. up to? Yeah, I loved Steffi Graf actually. Um, just you know, mm. she was one of the top ladies at the time uh, when I was growing up, and I just loved the way she played. I loved the way she moved on the court. Um, she w had fantastic footwork; like she was so quick on yeah. the court. Uh, her feet were moved like lightning, and uh, I wanted to have footwork like her. I wanted to move like yeah. her, so I used to skip. Um, oh yeah. I started skipping when I was, you know, nine or 10. And I started, you know, I did for many, many years, I did a thousand skips a night. Oh, wow. Um, just, yeah, just we in got, my kitchen at home. And we yeah. got the heart rate up doing that, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. No, but I found that if I didn't do my skipping, I felt sluggish on the court. Whereas if I did do the skipping, um, I just felt so light on my feet and was yeah. able to be really quick off the mark. So... Yeah, so copying, trying to copy Steffi Graf's footwork was uh, one of my things. Yeah, um, yeah. So from those junior days, you mentioned kind of uh, progressing up and and kind of and, and loving competing. But do you have like a, a best memory or kind of a, a proudest moment from those junior days playing in Ireland or or abroad, maybe, or just a, a best kind of moment? 
from the junior days and mm. um, probably you know I didn't really play that much abroad as a junior and um, but in the junior days probably uh, just the wins in Fitzwilliam were yep. really special like I think my under 12 win was uh, I wasn't seeded and I came and okay. I was able to I won the final eight six in the third. Wow. Um, I think I hit thirteen aces in the final. You know, wow, uh, yeah. so that was nice. You know, at under twelve, but uh, yeah. that was really special because I was kind of I was definitely an underdog. You know, uh, but that was great. Um, and then uh, I did I didn't win it under fourteen. I won it under sixteen, I think, and under eighteen. Um, that was nice. I really uh, was in, we ended up having to go indoors for the final of the under 18s okay. because uh, it was, a, I think it was a hurricane outside or something. Yeah. And uh, I was, I wasn't even able to warm up that day. You know, the way you hit your, you have your little practice beforehand. But I remember yeah. just um, my coach, uh, Ronan Reed was my coach at the time. And he was, uh, he just sat me down beforehand and he kind of just, got me in this zone he was just talking me through it's it's got almost like he hypnotized me but I, I he was just got me so focused and I just went out and the match was over like in under an hour uh, I won it very quickly and I played out of my mind like you know uh, so yeah. that was nice that was just nice to finish my junior career in that way yeah that was that was really special yeah yeah and then a final point kind of on the the junior days like do you think there's a big lesson you learned that has really kind of stood to you and you've you've kind of remembered since then um i think uh just the the working hard gives you results you know um yeah just even um just the simple thing of when you're on the court uh, say in a squad and the coach says pick up balls you know go go pick up the balls yeah like our coach uh, in one of the squads, I remember when I was very young, she had, a, she, she did a, um, she kind of gave us a lecture on picking up balls. If you're going to pick up the balls, pick them up properly, you know, don't waste time because the longer you do, you know, it takes yeah. you to pick up the balls, uh, the, you know, the less time you have to work on your tennis. So I remember that and it drives me mad when I'm in the squad, you know, and I'm the coach now yeah. and kids don't pick up balls. So this is for any kids who are listening. <laughs> not not that that would be a huge lesson, but just that's just one one element of it, you know, pick up the balls quickly so you can get on with your tennis. But um, just, uh, yeah, just working hard and um, trying, when you go out on the tennis court, running for every ball whether it's practice or a match running down every ball and um, even if you think you're going to let it bounce, it's going to bounce twice just run for it anyway and you yeah. might surprise yourself um, and yeah. then just one last thing on the mental side just uh, on um, when you go on the court don't look around don't look to see what what's uh, going on on the other courts mm. practice that in your practice games mm -hmm. yeah. or your practice sessions and um, because the more you you start to do it in the practice sessions then the more better you become at focusing and then in matches then it's easier to not get distracted you know yeah yeah Absolutely. yeah so those i think those little lessons i just learned through my you know growing up playing and um, just my coach ronan was great at just <laughs> trying to get my mind uh, yeah. focused on the right things yeah yeah so, no so you, you finish up your under 18s um as you mentioned you you, you won fits there under 18s and you go off to to san diego um for university so how was that kind of decision to go to the states firstly like how how did that kind of decision come about and then specific, um, specifically San Diego as well, then how did you decide on, on that uh, specific university? Right. Uh, the, well, there was a, a guy called Peter Wright, <laughs> Peter Wright, mm -hmm. who used to, uh, he used to be the Davis Cup captain, actually. Um, he, he had played for Ireland in Davis Cup and then he was Davis Cup captain for a while. And he used to come home at Christmas to play the indoors. And he gave me a little bit of advice, you know, it was my last year in school and he was saying, oh, you should consider going to America. So that's how that came about. You know, a few mm. Irish people had gone, you know, there were people yeah. going to the States to play. Yeah. Um, so I said, oh, yeah, I love this, the idea, the sound of that. It's a bit, um, it's a bit, you know, adventurous, but mm. yeah, I do like the sound of it. So, uh, yeah, then I just started writing letters back in those days. Yeah, it was just 
you wrote e oh no maybe you sent no you didn't I wrote letters I wrote yeah. letters to colleges and um then I got my video made up um yeah. and then the I suppose I started hearing back from a few colleges but I'd never written to San Diego because I had checked in a book that and uh, <laughs> I wrongly found, thought that um they don't give athletic scholarships so okay. I didn't bother writing to them mm. but then I met Peter Wright that Christmas and it was just a chance of luck he just said uh we were just chatting about it and he just said to me what about the University of San Diego did you ever apply to them and I said no I didn't because I don't think they give scholarships and he's like no no you should write to them so I did and then um they got on to me straight away and uh, then Peter was able to help me as well, saying, oh, oh this would be a great school for you to go to. So, um, and I just, yeah, it struck up a nice uh, relationship straight away with the coach there. And yeah. she was, you know, we just kind of, it was very comfortable right off the bat, uh, just talking on the phone. And uh, yeah, so I've just made the decision. I saw the brochure as well of the college and, you know, it's Southern California. It was gorgeous. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, the weather, yeah. the weather, the, you know, the climate there is fantastic, perfect for tennis. So yeah, so it was, e it was an easy decision. Once they offered me the scholarship, I was, yeah, it was, you were, yeah, grabbed it. But before you went, did you have a chance to go over and, and check it out before you had, had signed up? No, no, no. I'd never been to America. No, okay. so yeah, back then it was just like you got on a plane and you went over yeah. and you just, yeah. You yeah. hope for the best. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And did you have like a, a best memory from, from your time in college? Oh gosh, probably there's so many. Um, yeah, there's, uh, I just loved playing on the team. Um, it was just, I, you know, had a, a group of girls, uh, we're all like passionate about tennis, um, but, it, you know, living our college life and uh, just, yeah, I became really good friends with all the girls on the team. Um, I suppose a few of the wins. Oh yeah, I had a I had a great win one of the years. I beat the number one in the nation at the time, oh, really? um, and yeah. so that was a nice, uh, yeah, little yeah. kind of um, victory. Mm. Uh, I was yeah, it was my it was kind of my senior year that I started to play really well and things started to come together for me. Um, so I had that win and you know a few others after that. Uh, yeah, but I, I think as a team, um, there were a few times when we just beat team, other teams. I remember one particular, there was uh, Brimming Young University and we were up playing up against them and they were ranked way, way higher than us and just everything clicked for all of us that day. You know, we all just performed super well um, and we went into doubles, I remember, it, with the way we used it. They used to play it was you play your six singles and then it was three doubles matches mm. after. So it could be like three all after singles and then yeah. you'd have to win two of the doubles. But I remember myself and my partner, uh, we were playing our doubles and if we won our match, we'd win the tie. Mm. And yeah. Yeah, I remember just the last shot I hit, like an inside out forehand volley. Like, I don't know how I hit it, but... <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that was a big yeah. celebration for us all, and uh, yeah, a great win. And I think then our ranking went up as a result of that victory. Yeah, so that brilliant. Was, yeah. That was good. But there were moments like that throughout the four years that really, you know, it's just lovely to share it with my teammates. You know. Yeah. No. No. I asked earlier about the the lessons maybe you learned during your junior days, but do you have one or two big lessons you could pick out from from college days that you learned over there that you you might not have been exposed to as much back in Ireland? Yeah, um, I think um, playing tennis as a team sport is a great thing to do if you get the opportunity. I know mm -hmm. here in Ireland, like people have league matches and, you know, play on league teams. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, great. But then even, you know, the, for the juniors at the higher level, being able, you know, if they get on, say, the Interpro team or get on yeah. to um, a national team, uh, being able to like embrace that honor with um you know or with you know just really embrace it is um really what you should do because playing on a team can be such a rewarding experience you know as long as you guys have common goals you know for the team and you know you have you have your individual goals as well but just making um 
making it a team event or, or you know playing in a team event and just really uh trying to be the best team together uh, you know all the individuals if you can all just work together uh, it can be you can end up like having really good wins as long as you guys are all supporting each other whereas you know you know the way you can have players who are all you know really uh, good players highly ranked and all that but if there's no um bond between the players then there's uh you know the, you know they kind of just go and they play their matches and they could win they could lose yeah, they, yeah. they kind of don't, don't care less about the team uh but you know you know the way you see it in all sports when there's a great uh bond between the players you know super results can happen so yeah i think yeah. like we i experienced that a few times in college with my teammates um, and over there in America, I was, that was the first time I was exposed to, you know, where we did all these team bonding exercises. So, mm. so that was nice. I used to bring that back then to the Fed Cup, you know, yeah, remember? Yeah, and yeah. yeah, just trying to share it with the Fed, Fed Cup team as well. So. Yeah, so how highly would you recommend um, college as a route then to, to players over here as they, as they approach kind of college age how highly would you recommend that as, a, as an option for them i'd definitely recommend it unless you're um uh doing superbly well on the junior scene and then you have enough money and yeah. enough support and backing to go out and play on the pro circuit but for me for me i think you know it's definitely a brilliant way to get loads of matches um great ex you know and and great experience uh it's great for personal development as well you know you're away from home you're learning to survive on your yeah. own away from your parents and your family and um, yeah i would definitely definitely recommend it yeah <laughs> yeah 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 absolutely um yeah no so, so you, you finish up your four years there and um, you had a, a great four um, kind of final year as you mentioned so then at that stage you're you have kind of big thinking of going pro I, I'd imagine so. Yeah. Like, how, how does it? How does kind of your transition then into some pro tennis go after you finish up in San Diego? Yeah. So actually, my my last year in San Diego, the first half of the year was brilliant, but the second half of the year, when we started playing all our dual matches, yeah. I got injured. Oh, um, I had okay. a bad injury. I had a stress fracture. Uh, so that wasn't great because I was graduating then, and then I yeah. came home and. Uh, now my stress fracture had healed up, but I was I had trained uh, a little bit too much at the end of my senior year and or like overtrained, um, yeah. and I ended up getting shin splints. So I had shin splints for a year when I came back. So you know I had I was quite frustrated as you can imagine. I just yeah. wanted to play tennis and I wanted to go pro. So uh, anyway, I got myself back to fitness and I uh, started playing full time. Yeah, in 99, 1999. <laughs> so many years ago, the start of playing pro is quite tough like cuz you've got to you've got to qualify in the events, you've got to get through all the qualifying rounds just to get your little point or half a point or you know that kind of stuff. So but it was it was great it took me a few goes it took me maybe my probably my fourth or fifth tournament before i got my first point and mm. um, but it, it was good because i kept you know improving each tournament that went along like i was just finding my feet and i i had been off for a year uh so it was yeah just you know i was patient enough and eventually i got my first point and then you had to get three three tournaments before you got a yeah. ranking so and um, yeah, once I got my first ranking, I was delighted. And then after that, it just kind of, for that first year, it was great because any tournaments or any points you got, it just kept yeah. getting added to yeah, your ranking. Yeah. It's all positive, yeah. So your ranking's just going up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was great. So that's kind of uh, my first year. I ended up doing really well. I won a 25,000 in um, Great Britain and Hull. Uh, that was towards the end of the year so my ranking ended up i got up to maybe two i think by january 20 or what is it 2000 i was up to 238 right. that was, and that That's ended up being yeah. my highest ranking yeah but um 
then you know it was all about defending the points yeah, yeah, <laughs> as the yeah. next year came around so you know I I did well I, I in patches but then not so well in patches as well yeah, so yeah. you know it was a bit of a roller coaster I have to say you know the yeah. whole playing pro what do you think is the hardest thing about about like uh, the, the life on tour about, about pro tennis what do you think is the most difficult thing Oh, I think um, there are many difficult things. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, there's the expense. That's um, definitely a factor. Uh, I was lucky enough to have a sponsor. Um, but okay. yeah, it was, it was, it's, a, it's such an expensive uh, profession, I suppose, you know, because you have to travel um, now I didn't have a coach traveling with me, so I, I did most of my traveling on my own. So that was, uh, that was really tough. I found yeah. that probably the hardest, like, you yeah. know, cause I used to get so lonely, um, <laughs> yeah. having my dinner by myself, having my, yeah. you know, uh, breakfast by myself and um, that kind of thing. It was, yeah. Cause it's, it's not really a place where you can make friends or good friends I think on the guys circuit it probably is but on the girls it just for me anyway it wasn't uh, I didn't yeah I feel like it was uh, you could make friends now I did get to travel with uh, one of my friends Karen Eugen sometimes she was able to yeah. play uh, come and come and travel with me and we played doubles together and that um, but yeah I think the hardest part is just if you are away on your own and um, just having to organize everything yourself you know practice courts uh getting a hitting partner and um, making sure you know you know when the transport is to and from the courts uh, yeah um but and then when you go and play your matches if you lose it's really tough if you're on your yeah. own just to try and pick yourself back up again you know and yeah. Um, yeah i mean you it does make you it, like a bit the, that whole process doing it again and again you know you do become resilient and that but uh it is hard it's it's not all uh rosy out there yeah I, I, no. I think it's definitely um and and the thing is as well there are places sometimes you go and they're not glamorous tennis clubs at all yeah, you know yeah, and yeah. you might have to get on a bus ride for um I don't know, 20, 30 minutes and, you know, there's no air conditioning and the heat outside is awful. Yeah. 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 So, so there's all those factors, but I think yeah. probably the hardest, the hardest thing for me um, was the just being on my own for so long, you know, yeah. you know, for weeks uh, uh, and not having somebody to just get my mind off the game you know, just somebody to chat to, to be able to, you know, take your mind away from the game in the evenings. Yeah, kind of yeah, thing. yeah. Yeah. So all those challenges, what do you think it was that kept you doing it for, you know, years and, and keeping going? <laughs> yeah, good question. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think uh, I had it in my mind that, uh, like, I had certain goals that I wanted to achieve. Yeah. So you kind of just sucked it up um, and you know, well, that's what I did. Uh, mm. But, I, but, you know, through that process, just when I look, I, it's when I look back now and I go, God, I was so lonely. But at the time I was just like, this is what it is. It's, yeah. it is what it is. Um, but, you know, I would have journaled all the time, like wrote, written down in my okay. journal, uh, you know, just my thoughts and how I was feeling. And I found them there recently up in the attic and was just going through them going, God, yeah, I remember that time just sitting there by myself, you know, and it seemed like everybody else had their own coach or their yeah, own team. Yeah. But, but in reality, that wasn't, the, it wasn't the way, you know, but um yeah, I don't know. I, I think uh, I was determined to try and, you know, be the best that I could be. And that may, it, it did take its toll, maybe. And then, uh, you know, it was 
maybe by the end, by uh, after the fifth year of doing this yeah. uh, professional tennis career, um, I just yeah, I'd had enough then. It was yeah. it was. I think if I had reached the top hundred, I wouldn't have minded so much. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. But uh, but unfortunately, I didn't. You know, that was my goal, like yeah. to just get to the top one hundred. Um, but yeah, there were a few factors against me, and yeah, yeah. it's just unlucky at times. Yeah. So. Yeah. Was, was there was there like a, a a lowest point where you kind of you know, maybe you know you kind of felt that you know everything was kind of against you? Was there like it might have been lost, or was there? some point along the way when you know you, you really hit rock bottom <laughs> well not um i think actually towards the end it was my last singles tournament and i just the passion wasn't there anymore yeah. it was kind of like okay i've i don't i don't have the desire that i used to have um and i i would always have thought oh god that'll never happen to me i'm always mm. going to be passionate i'm always going to give it a hundred percent um but yeah, I think with all the just the factors that I've been fighting against for so long, I think yeah. eventually my my body and my mind just well, yeah. not oh yeah, I was injured as well on and off, you know, yeah. so that you yeah. know you're always trying to pick yourself up after your injuries and that. But no, I think my mind was just like I'm not I'm not doing this to myself yeah. anymore. This yeah. is just not fun, you yeah. know. But you when as a tennis player, you don't want to be you don't want to be seen to be giving up, you know, for, for, so I battled with that for a long time. Like, you know, a few, you know, six months, maybe a year, my last year, just like thinking, Oh, should I give up or should I not? Uh, You know, and I remember actually my coach just saying, take, you know, when I came home from that particular tournament and he said, and I, I told him how I was feeling. I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, But I was very upset about it, you know, yeah. thinking oh my god that's it like I'm giving up and and he said you know just take six weeks off just take six weeks off and uh, six weeks off and see how you are after it see you know you might be refreshed or you might be like okay I've made the right decision yeah so I did that and after the end of the six weeks yeah I was like yeah no I don't want to go back <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah yeah, yeah you know I, I was, was gonna was, ask you um like how difficult the decision it was to to retire in the end so it sounds like it was I guess you kind of knew it at the same, but at the same time, you couldn't quite do it. It was almost yeah. a fight with yourself to to make the call at the end. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, I, I suppose I had two kind of voices in my head. Yeah. One was the compassionate one saying, you know, you're not, you're not happy at the moment. Mm. You're not, you're not happy doing what you're doing. And then there's the other one, the real determined Devon saying, yeah stop listening to that voice yeah. get on with it be tough you know get over it <laughs> that kind of thing yeah, so yeah uh, but uh, yeah that those voices were there for a while uh, you yeah, know over yeah. a year so yeah, yeah so yeah how, how was life after retirement then so you, you made the decision was it kind of a big relief or did you you know find yourself missing it day to day how was life kind of in the aftermath of, of retirement actually it was it was a nice little transition i kind of slowly stopped over maybe three or four years <laughs> because okay. i okay i stopped playing full-time as in and uh, traveling and playing tournaments abroad but uh i then um i started coaching pretty much straight away but then uh there were the domestic tournaments in ireland yeah. to be played so for three years, I played all the tournaments okay. in Ireland and really enjoyed that and made a bit of money, you know, made yeah. money so I could get a deposit for my house, uh, I could buy a car, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, so that was nice. I was still competing. Um, and then Fed Cup, I played Fed Cup for like, so I stopped playing in 2000. Four, I think and then I played Fed Cup all the way for the next four or five years okay yeah so 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 it was uh I think I was delighted yeah that I wasn't yeah. traveling I mean it's hard person. to take it it was, it was hard like you know watching say you know the results of girls who I would have played or beaten yeah, and seeing yeah. them you know still playing and doing well you know that's hard but sure that's fine it's life you know uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I got over that <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah the fact that I was still competing and doing well at home here yeah, was, yeah. was good it was good for my 
my mind I suppose yeah yeah now a couple of other things I wanted to kind of go back to to your career for a moment and um, I was looking through a few <laughs> few results and um, I saw that you had a, a doubles win against uh, Stouser so oh that's uh, right yeah so it just <laughs> you know if I look back at that result now um you know me obviously not knowing at the time like it, at, at the time for you was like was that you know was she a big name like she was obviously wasn't the name she she became you know did, did, yeah. were you able to tell that you know maybe there was something a bit special about her or was it literally just another match for you you know another kind of doubles win mm, um yeah so sam stozer was a yeah she was a great player i think she was a good bit younger than me at the time when okay. we were playing um but she would have been playing a lot of the same tournaments as me mm. and um yeah, I wouldn't have been able to tell that, oh, she was going to go on and be do what she yeah. did. You know, she was very successful. But, uh, um, yeah, just I have that now in my, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. I beat her yeah. in a double yeah. match once, yeah. you know. But um, yeah. yeah, so, like, obviously, over your career, you had, you know, incredible success, 10 titles, like Irish Open, singles, doubles. Like, what, what do you think is your proudest moment, looking back on it now? Do you look back on with the most kind of fondness or, or pride? Well, fondness would be the Irish Open. The um, that uh, the one I think I won in two thousand and one. Um, I won the singles and I won the doubles with Karen Nugent. Um, yeah, I've said this before to some people that um, I've I'd always had on my list of dream goals was to win the Irish Open. Yeah. And when I was about 15 or 16, I remember getting a wild card into the qualifying of the Irish Open. Yeah. And I played my first match in qualifying and I lost love and love and was like devastated thinking, yeah. oh my God, how the heck am I ever going to win this tournament uh, when I can't even win a game in the first round of qualifying? And that, that tournament at that time was held in Riverview. Okay. And maybe on the clay course, they used to have outdoor clay there. So um, just coming back years later, and I had been playing full time for maybe two years at this stage. And yeah, just being able to um, win in front of my, like my mom and dad came, yeah. were able to see them. My husband was there. We weren't married at the time, but, you know, it was just a real special T time or a moment because it, w it was a professional tournament but all my other professional tournaments that were I was playing and um, my parents weren't there because yeah. they were all abroad yeah. you know so that was just yeah really special just to have that Irish Open ha to yeah. have that title and then to be able to uh, for my parents and family to be there yeah great you know yeah. I guess another yeah. situation when you might have had a, a similar feeling would, would have been in Fed Cup which I know you played for, for years. Um, so how special was that, that first time you were selected? Like how old were you then? And how, kind of, how did that feel, your, your first selection for, for Fed Cup? Yeah, the first selection was, I think I was 15 or 16. And yeah, yeah, um, yeah I felt a little bit um, like a fish out of water. <laughs> I didn't really know what was going on. Yeah. Now I did get to play a few matches, a few doubles matches. Um, and enjoyed it but yeah just it was a little bit because I didn't play many foreign or you know many events as a junior abroad mm. so um yeah it just it was really just a whole new experience for me and um, but with Fed Cup like the so the first one was it was good but uh and, and and a great honor and uh, I've made the Fed Cup team and all that but yeah. it, it was it wasn't until years later when I felt like I was really um I knew what it was all about and yeah. uh, playing on the team and there was two years as a player that uh, we ended up getting promoted which was always okay. what we were trying yeah. to do you know always trying to get promoted out of the group whatever group we were in so there was one year with Owen Casey down in South Africa. And we, we ended up getting promoted. And then, and that was a super feeling. It was like that team thing that I was talking about yeah. earlier, being, yeah. you know, where we all gelled. We had great fun that week um, and we all played well and, you know, won the matches that we needed to win. Um, and then there was another time, the same kind of situation in Mauritius with under Gary Cahill. Yeah. So uh, that was, yeah, brilliant brilliant uh, feelings in those yeah. two particular times. yeah yeah 
always enjoyed Fed Cup. I loved yeah. it. I played it for yeah. 11 years, I think it was. And yeah, it was always just a lovely, a lovely uh, experience just, you know, being with the girls and trying to, play, you know, trying to win for our country. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know then years later you got to, to, to be the captain for the, the Fed Cup team. So like, how, how did that compare being the captain? How did that compare back to, to your playing days? Yeah, it was, um, well, that was, I, I felt really proud with that as well. Just, you know, being the captain of the Irish team um, yeah. and having, um, yeah, being the, being the one to call the shots, make the decisions, who's going to yeah. play, uh, that kind of stuff the stuff you know had had a bit of responsibility or you know it had loads of responsibility um but it, no that was a great experience as well um just being able i, I mean there was i did it for six years so every year the teams were different and yeah. you know the dynamics on the teams were different every year um but there was one year in particular where we did get promoted um and that was that was superb like the the girls just performed really well and again it was just like you know everything gelled everything fell into place we were lucky at times and you know it was just all all good but um being the captain uh i certainly um found it more difficult when matches were on yeah, <laughs> to be okay. sitting on the side of the court yeah. rather than being the player I yeah. could feel my whole body like shaking with, you know, adrenaline and not being able to release it through playing, you know. Um, yeah, just being nervous for the girls and uh, just wanting them to win so bad, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. But yeah, so then when they would come over at the change of ends, I would try my hardest to be like super calm and yeah. talk them through their strategy or their goals or whatever. But really inside i was like everything was churning up i was like oh so um wound up yeah but yeah i hope that didn't come across so i don't know <laughs> it did with the with the girls <laughs> yeah but certainly that year that we won um, when yeah. we got promoted, um it was it was yeah just a lovely special memory yeah you know I, I know people say this it's always easier like in those tense situations to be playing as opposed to be on the sidelines so i guess you, you can very much uh, agree with that Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I find that probably the toughest part to try not like have my legs shaking, you know, yeah. <laughs> that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah, I kind of felt sometimes after the matches, I just needed to go off and do a run or something yeah. just to get whew, rid of all that energy, you know. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> um, you know, just to move on a little bit, um, I know after after you played, um, you moved into into coaching. So was that kind of just a like kind of the always what you were planning to do and kind of an easy move, or how did you kind of? fall into a coaching position um so no i had actually always said i'd never be a tennis coach okay. <laughs> but it was kind of uh the next logical step for me um to you know when i stopped playing uh, i remember my dad saying well okay well what are you going to do now i studied accounting in college but mm. i wasn't going was to oh. going to be an accountant so um I, yeah, I just went uh, into the coaching and just got a job in my local club. And then um, I went to Riverview, started coaching there. And then we moved, to, I, I met my husband there and we, we moved down to Wicklow, down to, like I live in the Boca now. Um, so we just started building up our coaching business and my husband's a tennis coach as well. So we st started building up our tennis coaching business down here and yeah it's just gone from there I mean I do enjoy the coaching I've kind of gone you know coached all levels really yeah and um, I, I love coaching beginners and um, you know kids who would be just starting out for the first time maybe who wouldn't be very coordinated but I do really enjoy I get a lot out of that type of coaching um, and I, uh, there was a time there where I was coaching the performance players yeah. and, um, you know, obviously all the way up to Fed Cup. Um, but yeah, I've taken kind of, I, I did make a decision there uh, after my sixth year in Fed Cup to uh, pull away from it. You know, I just said, OK, yeah. I, I, I've done it for six years. It's time to give somebody else a go. So John McGann then took over. But um, I have i'm i'm right now i'm coaching 
with my husband in the tennis club in Arklo and we do a lot of schools tennis as well. So, but um, yeah, and then I've started my other career as well of, you know, the yoga and yes. meditation. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just before we move on to that yoga and meditation, um, just I was going to ask your, your favorite thing about coaching. So it sounds like it might kind of be the that kind of beginner stage where you can, you know, you can see a big difference day to day almost as they, you know, get more comfortable. Is, is that kind of the, you know, your favorite thing about in, in kind of the coaching world or, or something else? Yeah, no, I'd say it's probably um, just having a connection with the student, like, yeah. you know, just creating this connection with the student, whether it's, you know, if it's a beginner or a pro player, just uh, feeling like, you know, I'm here to help you. And they're like taking as much in as they can, you know, um, and just feeling like I'm really helping them and they're really getting something yeah. out of what I'm trying to teach them I think that's probably uh the thing I'm, I enjoy most from coaching just uh there are times you know when you have kids that you're coaching and there isn't that connection and it doesn't feel so rewarding I suppose yeah so I love when I do get a connection with yeah. a student um you know yeah that's that's I think that's why I do it yeah that's yeah why I love yeah it. yeah yeah, so I guess to move on to the yoga meditation, I guess before we get to what you're doing now and talking about that, I guess just how did you get to this position? Like, you know, wh wh where where did your kind of relationship with yoga start, you know, back in your in your playing days, maybe? Like, how, how did that all begin for you and how has it, has it been since? Yeah, so I think I took, um, I think I started with meditation, actually. Uh, okay. I was in, it was in college and I was going through a very tough patch in my tennis um I, I was having a mental block with my backhand you know okay. as some people might you know tennis players would uh identify with this like just uh, i couldn't hit my backhand over the net to save my life <laughs> um, it was yeah just a real you know tensing up of the whole body just complete nervous uh thing and um, and you know and my backhand would have been my most solid shot mm. uh, so that was a real kind of oh god I was starting to you know do it in matches I couldn't get it over the net and losing points and anyway I uh, I had a coach in college who started to you know so she suggested to me maybe you know she was giving me a little bit of advice on mental game and all that sort of stuff and then I just started meditating and I don't know it was just um I just started to try and find a quiet place. I used to light a candle and sit in my room. Mm. And this was really for, I mean, people meditate for all different reasons. Um, I was meditating initially to uh, to help my mental game on the tennis court because really I was so passionate about tennis. That's really all that mattered to me. And um, I just found peace with that. I just, you know, started to kind of, you know, the mind started to clear. Uh, I became more relaxed. And then I was just on court. I was uh, able to bring that kind of calm feeling on court. And I was able to think with, you know, clear more clearly and mm. make better decisions. And um, I wasn't as reactive, you know, not getting so uh, wound up when I, miss points or lose points so that you know the, it, it kind of really opened my eyes to this whole meditation um idea and then I started to read lots of books you know uh, I remember reading books by Wayne Dyer years ago um, and just that whole thing of there's one that he wrote called you'll see it when you believe it you know so okay. just having the trying to believe stuff first and then you know manifesting your your dreams or your goals um and then uh i think i got into then the physical practice of yoga i remember taking my first yoga class in college but then not touching on it again yeah. until a time when i was injured i was playing full time but i was injured and i was able to go down and just you know have a little kind of yoga workout but i found that uh i loved the kind of not so much the stretching aspect of the yoga poses, but just um, I loved the, you know, the focusing on the breath. And it gave me just this feeling of just being in the present moment and, you know, just that calm kind of uh, um, just feeling connected to 
this present moment that kind yeah, of stuff yeah. so so then you know I was uh, so after I, I I touched you know I kept doing my meditation you know when I was playing full-time and all that but uh, I went to or I, I stopped playing full-time and then I remember just always saying oh, I'd love to do a yoga teacher training and then eventually I did in 2009 and then yeah, a few years after that, I I started. I had to do my two little boys after that, and then um, just started teaching. Then a few years later, uh, I started teaching kids yoga first, and then I just just had then was building up my confidence mm. to uh, go back and teach adult, you know, yeah. adult yoga, yoga to adults. So. Um, yeah and then it just yeah it's good it's just grown from there and I just love anything to do with yoga or meditation I'll just read and um, just try to educate myself all the time and yeah so then um just I have just had this you know this thought that I'd like to merge my two passions together you know just yeah. um I'd love to, you know, I because in the past I've been, I'd worked with players, you know, when you'd be giving players private lessons and I'd be trying to, you know, give them tips for the mental game, how to become more relaxed on court, how to, you know, deal with nerves, how to become more confident, um, how to deal with your anger on court, all those kind of things. So I'd always had it in my head. I want to put it together, a package for um, tennis players or for athletes really you know but tennis players was initially yeah. my thought um, of uh, you know a, a package that of meditations that they could do that I used to do so I yeah. have that nearly ready to launch it's um, I call it be present compete you know so you have to be present first and then you can compete and you can compete at your best so that's an, yeah. a, a meditation package I have ready to go and um, then I'm also putting together I'm just putting the finishing touches to a yoga and meditation package specifically for tennis players Brilliant. so the meditation the other one the be present compete that's for all athletes but then the yoga and meditation for tennis players is just I'm kind of honing in on what a tennis player needs because I think I'd be, yeah. have a fair idea <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah yeah absolutely you know, I know that's something so, that I'd definitely, you know, like it's the kind of thing that would appeal greatly to, to me. Like, I mean, so if people want to, to find out more about that, what, like where can they find out about that and maybe take part if they want to? Yeah, so I'll be launching it soon. So um, my website is YvonneDoyle.com um, or you can find me on Instagram, Yvonne Doyle Yoga or Facebook, Yvonne Doyle Yoga. And um, when when I launch it, all the details will be on there. Yeah, but yeah. If, if people wanted to kind of be on my email list, um, if, if they go to the website, YvonneDoyle.com, um, and you can subscribe to my website and then uh, you get sent a little yoga nidra meditation mm. which is a nice long kind of I think it's about 20 minutes long uh, it's just a real relaxing meditation for whoever and um, but then you'll you'll be the first to know when yeah. um, I am launching those packages those programs you know yeah no I know as well you've you've done kind of some videos with Tennis Ireland and Tennis so maybe if people want to check those out as well that's that would be a good place to start as well that's right. Yeah. Um, my YouTube channel, <laughs> Yvonne <Yeah>. Doyle Yoga. <laughs> yeah. 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 They're up there as well. And then there's other little practices. If you know, if you liked the ones for the tennis players and um, there's other little practice, I've just videoed some of my classes that I've done with my regular clients and popped them on YouTube. So yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. They're up there. Yeah. I know I'll be checking it out myself anyway. So oh, for sure. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Just a couple okay. more questions, Yvonne. Um, I know I'm taking up a fair bit of your time now, so I really, really appreciate the time. But um, a couple more questions for you. Um, if, if you could go back and start again, what, what do you think you'd do differently um, in, 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 in your tennis career? What do you think you would do differently again? Um, I think I would, well, remember I was talking about uh, when I was playing full time and just feeling uh, a little bit of pressure, feeling um, kind of lonely and all that sort of stuff. I think if I had talked to somebody about it a bit more, um, it would have been, it would have been very helpful to me. I think uh, I also, I, st I did get a bit obsessed with ranking points and okay you know, my position on the ranking table and, uh, 
yeah, I just started to kind of, when I was getting obsessed with that, then I was putting pressure on myself, wanting to win, you know, so that my, you know, I could defend my points or that kind of stuff. Um, and I kept all of that inside because I didn't want it to appear like that I was uh, worried about that kind of stuff. So I think if I had uh, shared my thoughts with people, you know, people would have been able to just kind of tell me, okay, that's, you know, that's completely normal. Just relax. You've got to focus on and take your focus to something else, you know? So I, 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 that's really it. I think I, and, and yeah. also if I had had somebody to travel with, that would have been brilliant, but I didn't. <laughs> so. Yeah. 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 I guess that was out of your control as well. It was, you know, it's financial reasons and stuff like it's. Yeah. It's exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but I think the other thing I could have maybe I just if I had relaxed and opened up a bit more, um, I could have been, uh, I could have got help from just from people saying to me, you know, it, it's okay. That's everybody goes through that, and you know, just getting a little bit of direction on where my fo, you know, refocusing yeah, yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. What What do you think is your your number one piece of advice for for junior players now? What's the, the first thing you'd say to them? Um, I would say to them, keep working hard if you're enjoying it. If you're not enjoying it, question why. Mm. Um, are you playing for yourself or are your parents making you play? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I would, um, yeah, because, you know, there's players out there who enjoy tennis, but they probably want to just play in the club. They don't want to play yeah. the tournaments, but the parents are making them play the tournaments. Yeah. Um, but uh, then you see that there would be the other argument from the other side uh, where I, I know I have a friend from Czech, Czech Republic who said, no, it's the parents who have to push the kids, you know, because then they're going to be champions. But you wonder, um, will those people, if they do become champions, okay, uh, are they going to be happy? I think it's all about the happiness of yeah, the person yeah. at the end of the day, you know. So yeah. if they're happy, keep playing. And yeah. if not, maybe Absolutely, yeah. change things up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, I know you said to me earlier you have a, a funny story um, about tennis, so I think uh, you can take it away. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. It might not be that, <laughs> that funny, but um, it would, this is one of my Fed Cup days. Um, we were in Portugal this particular day and uh, it's just about a match that, you know, kind of, it's almost like anything that could go wrong, went wrong. And um, mm. we were playing, it was our last day playing for a uh, promotion, you know, so we, were, we had to win the tie to get promoted. And uh, we were playing on clay court in Portugal, which clay is, was my least favorite surface. Okay. And we were, um, I think I was playing, I think we'd already played one match. I can't remember now wh whether we won the first match or not, but I was out to play this girl who I'd lost to the previous year and she was kind of a clay court specialist and I was a clay court hater. <laughs> so um, anyway, we started the match and, um, you know, halfway through the first set, then it got started to get really dark. The clouds were coming over and it'd been yeah. scorching sunshine all week. And so we weren't really prepared for this. And then the rain started to, you know, a few drops of rain and then yeah. it just started to rain heavier, heavier and it lashed. So we had to come off court and um, there was no indoor courts at this club. And this match had to be completed because it was the tie yeah. or, or it was the promotion no match. So yeah. um, they bunged us all into a coach and uh, we drove for about 45 minutes to an hour to a club where they had an indoor court um, oh. but yeah it was a court an indoor court but well, there was a roof over the court but there were all the sides of the court and the backs of the court were open so yeah, you know okay. there was a top on it yeah but when we arrived it wasn't raining there so it was grand we went out and court started continuing the match and um then I think that rain that was in the other club started yeah. coming over. Those yeah. clouds came over and it started pelting down. And uh, the, t the roof of the court was so, uh, it was made of tin or, you know, so it was hammering down. Yeah. I couldn't hear the umpire. You couldn't hear people yeah. calling the ball out or anything. Um, 
then the rain started to kind of come in sideways you know the wind yeah, picked the wind, up yeah. and all my teammates were at the side of the court initially they were all sheltered but then the rain started coming in on top of them it was soaking them and um, so they were all getting soaked I couldn't hear the umpire I was kind of getting a little bit angry and frustrated uh, yeah. then the water started gushing down the step at the back of the court and it was starting to create a big puddle so I said to the umpire I think we should stop and I wanted yeah. to stop because I was losing at this stage yeah. and uh, he was like no no we have have to continue we have to continue uh, I was like oh for god's sake so we continued on a few more games and then I mean the rain was torrential and uh but I was relatively dry until then all these little springs started uh coming up on the court like little geysers like the water started bubbling uh, and about five or six different places on the court on my side of the court and mm. you know on the other side as well uh, so then I looked at the umpire and I was like uh what, what do you what do you what do you think yes seriously can we stop now and then he was like okay I think we should stop the match so then we had to go and uh, get all bung into the coach again and then they brought us to another club which is about 20 or 30 minutes away you know just this was just a nightmare of a match and then we went to this next club and it was indoor fully indoor uh, but I think at this stage I was a set and a breakdown or something yeah and anyway we went out and we lost <laughs> and I lost and I was <laughs> after really all that, frustrated yeah. after all that it took about I don't know six hours to play that one uh, one and a half hour match yeah. but uh, so it's not that funny that funny of a story but it's just one of those things where it's like remember that match like it was Pete yeah. Lowe that was the captain at the time and yeah it was just one of those matches where you kind of go well Fed Cup or not Fed Cup in particular but you know tennis is not always is glamorous yeah <laughs> you see on the telly you see on yeah, the tv absolutely. it seems like they're always playing in sunshine and the perfect weather and perfect court and all that but yeah that was a bit of a nightmare funny yeah. funny kind of nightmarish memory for me so you know it's, yeah. it's one you won't forget probably it'll it'll, it'll, it'll stay with yeah. you <laughs> yeah 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 exactly. it'll stay with you on those those wet afternoons when if you're doing coaching or something you'll you'll, you'll think back to that day yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. it's not this bad so. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> um, yeah yeah no just to, to finish off what's your favorite thing about tennis just a, a final question favorite thing about tennis my favorite thing about tennis for me uh, when I'm playing um, and I've just started recently doing this with my kids now they're at a stage where they can rally it's mm. just hitting the ball cleanly and just kind of I don't know having that uh, that little I, I remember posting about this recently uh, for Tennis Ireland but just like it's like a little dopamine hit every time mm. the ball you you feel like you've hit the hit it in the perfect spot and it lands in the perfect position that you wanted to land in yeah. uh yeah that's my favorite thing about tennis i used to love yeah. drilling and drilling and drilling till the cows came home so yeah that's uh that's probably my favorite thing absolutely now. yeah yeah, yeah, no, it's a, yeah. It's a, that, that that great feeling of of perfection almost on that ball yes exactly exactly yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think we'll leave it there, Yvonne. Just a, a big thank you for, for your time and for, for, for talking so well um, to me today. Oh, no, no, I really, really appreciate it, yeah. Thanks very much. Ah, you know, thanks, Adam, and thanks for what you're doing. It's great. It's great to get, you know, coaches and players and all sorts of people on, you know, talking about tennis in Ireland. So, yeah, thank no, it's you my pleasure. That. My pleasure, yeah. Big thanks once again to Yvonne for her time. And I'd highly recommend that you check out her yoga and meditation programs at yvondoyle.com. And thank you very much for listening to this first episode after a few weeks off. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing to the show so you don't miss an episode. Tell a friend who you think might also enjoy it and join me again next week. Until then, I hope everyone is doing well. Get out there, play some tennis, and above all, stay safe. My name is Adam. Goodbye.